Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, the much requested Atomic Pi. This is a single board computer with a quad core Intel Atom processor and a price tag of between about $35 and $50, depending on where you buy the board. Because the Atomic Pi has got an x86 processor, it can run mainstream Linux distributions as well as Windows. So let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have the Atomic Pi from Digital Loggers. And this was launched as a Kickstarter in December 2018 with an initial price of $34. But the current list price on Amazon.com is $49.95, and for this particular board shipped to the UK, I paid $52.42 or £42.75, including taxes and delivery, which is not bad for an x86 based computer. So let's open it up, nice and simple. Even for me, there we are, we've got a package inside, anti static thing, and uh, oh, there's some sort of leaflet in the bottom, but we'll uh, ignore that for now. Just look at the package. Will it open straightforwardly? Oh, it will. That was simple. And, ah, here we are. If I can get it out. There is the Atomic Pi, which is dominated, as you can see, by its heatsink. It's rather a heavy uh, single board computer. And it's quite a large single board computer. We compare that to a, a Raspberry Pi. If I can get those two on the screen together. There you are. You can see significantly bigger than the a Raspberry Pi, and also significantly bigger than the other x86-based single-board computers. Here, for example, we have a Latte Panda 464 on the original x86-based Latte Pandas. So, let's take a closer look at the board, and straight away you can see we've got a real-time clock battery on the Atomic Pi, because uh, here it is, that's good to see. And beneath this uh, nice large heatsink, we've clearly got the processor, the Intel quad-core Atom processor. And specifically, this is an X5Z8350 CPU running at 1.44 gigahertz base frequency and with a burst frequency of 1.92 gigahertz. And then we've also got on here Intel Cherry Trail HD graphics running at between 200 and 500 megahertz. In terms of memory, on the board we've got two gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, and we've also got some onboard storage. We've got specifically 16 gigabytes of EMMC flash storage on the Atomic Pi. So we can either boot from that storage or from a micro SD card or from USB. In terms of connectivity, wirelessly, we've got a Wi Fi and Bluetooth, 802.11bg NNAC Wi Fi, and Bluetooth 4.0. And then finally, as a feature, well, I don't quite know where it is on the board, but it's very exciting. We've got a nine axis inertial navigation sensor with a compass. And if you're thinking, why have we got that on the Atomic Pi? Well, all will become clear later in the video, at least clearer than it is now. So let's take a look at the front edge of the board. And it does offend me this thing won't uh, sit nice and level, but it won't because of things underneath we'll see in a second. But uh, regardless of that, in terms of connectivity, we have got a gigabit ethernet and we've got one USB 3.0 Type-A socket. And then next to that, we have got this uh, connector here. This is actually labeled as a webcam connector, but in reality, it is a, a USB 2 port. You could connect a USB 2 port to that header. Next to that, there's some very tiny connectors. I've no idea what they are. I can't find that one out. But I do know that over here, we've got two little pads which are labeled as fan. So you could attach a system fan to those if you needed it. Rotating around on the first short edge, we can see the micro SD card slot, which will take a card up to 256 gigabyte bootable card. And then we could also see in here the uh, connector for the uh, real time clock battery lead going up there. And then we've also got here a reset switch, nice little clicky reset switch. Moving to the second lung edge, you'll find we've got a full size HDMI connector, which supports video output at up to 1080p 60 frames a second, as far as I'm aware. And then we've also got some antenna connectors. We've got here a Bluetooth antenna connector and then two Wi-Fi antenna connectors, although antennas to connect into these are not supplied with the board. And then finally, we've got two other connectors here, one of which is for a volume control connector and one of which is for UART. 
Finally, moving to the second short edge, we find a whole cacophony of connectors, and I wish I could tell you what they all did, but I can't. The ones I do know are these two though, these are speaker connectors. And so there we are, we've looked at all the edges of the Atomic Pi. So the last thing to look at is the underside of the board, which is actually very important because there's only one thing on the underside of the board we need to take note of, which is this, which is a 26 pin GPIO connector. And often people don't use the GPIO connectors on a single board computer, they don't need them for their particular project. But here we have to use the GPIO connector because the only way to power this board is by putting five volts of power into this GPIO connector. So it's absolutely critical to the operation of the atomic Pi. Final thing I'd say here is that this board does require you to put power in there, and it's also got this uh, head, as you might remember, for a USB 2 connector, which isn't currently in the form of a USB 2 connector. And because of that, you can buy a baseboard for the Atomic Pi, which takes many of the connectors here out to screw terminals and proper USB ports and things. And you can also buy a small power module, which actually plugs onto the GPIO connector to give you a barrel jack connector. But I'm not gonna be doing that. I'm going to be rigging up my own means of powering the Atomic Pi. To provide my atomic pi with life-giving electrical energy, I'm going to use this, which happens to be my ROC64 adapter, as you can probably see written on the back. The, the atomic pi requires at least 2.5 amps at 5 volts. This will supply um, 3 amps at 5 volts, so that should be fine. And what I've done, this is terminated in a, a barrel jack, as you can see, and I've made up this little connector from an old connector I had lying around. Not the neatest soldering job in history, but it'll do. And that'll uh, go onto the end like that, and that'll therefore give us uh, some flying leads. I've got uh, two positives and, and two ground rails coming off to make sure we've got enough power across. And these will link onto the atomic pi. I think its pins are three and five I'll use for my positive wires here, and a two and four for ground. And I'll put those onto the Atomic Pi, and I'm also going to give the board um, some risers because clearly this is going to go in underneath, so to make things a bit better, I'm going to take the board and to take some of these and put these through the holes and mount it up. And the whole thing will look a bit like this. And as you can see, I've actually put two risers in to keep the board significantly off the surface, which is to stop the power wires going into the GPIO connector getting squashed. And I've also added in a USB 3 hub here going into the single USB 3 port, so I can connect in my mouse and keyboard here, and there's two more USB 3 ports around the back here. And I've also added in a Wi-Fi antenna I had lying around, which will uh, hopefully help us with the Wi-Fi reception. So there we are, the uh, Atomic Pi is all ready to be uh, powered up, so let's see how it performs. So, here we are running Lubuntu on the Atomic Pi. And this software came pre-installed on my EMMC flash storage on the board. I didn't have to install this. I just booted up and uh, here we are. And uh, we can tell it's Lubuntu because if I go to log out, you can see that uh, there we are. It tells us we're in Lubuntu. And uh, if I go to system information, you can see that uh, we've got the CPU information as we would expect. The RAM there is, is two gigabytes, graphics 1920-1080. Motherboard information there is interesting. I'll come back to what that is and what it means a bit later in the video. And this is a nice, very workable distro. You could certainly use this uh, very happily. There's a reasonable amount of stuff uh, pre-installed so you can actually get on with doing things uh, fairly quickly. Uh, let's go to uh, internet and go to say uh, Firefox and um, to show you that comes up pretty fast. It's a good browsing experience on this machine. Let's go to explaining computers and uh, there we are. It works. And uh, let's go to uh, YouTube, because I'm sure you'll want to go to YouTube and see how that works. And I can report YouTube playback is pretty good. This is my sample uh, 1920 1080 clip. Hopefully in a second we'll be able to go to a full screen. There we are. And uh, this should be playing in, uh, make sure it's in uh, 1920 1080. And as you can see, it's playing very nicely, no problems at all. Let's bring up stats for nerds, but I don't think we really need it. Uh, it's not dropping frames. This works very well. So if you want to use an Atomic Pi running the, the default uh, installed software, which at least for me was as, as Lubuntu, it's a very nice machine. You can use it as a media player, basic office work, web browsing, very nicely indeed. This said, 
I want to see what else we can do with this ball. We've got an x86 based single ball computer here, so let's see what else we can run on the Atomic Pi. Guess what? Here we are booting into Linux Mint 19.1 64-bit edition on the Atomic Pi. And yes, this is absolutely bonkers. This is far too heavy a distro to be running on an Atom-based board with a two gigabytes of RAM, but I just wanted to see if it would work. And in a second, we will get there. It's not the fastest boot up, obviously, because of the, the power of the machine. We're actually booting here off a USB flash drive. I've not installed this on the EMMC. We're just booting from a USB drive. But uh, here we are. It is arriving in Linux Mint. Here we are running Linux Mint on the Atomic Pi. And as you can see, there's the Atomic Pi's uh, disk. It actually thinks it's uh, a micro SD card on the, this system. But uh, it's working. This is fantastic. And we've got, you know, proper Linux Mint running here. We can go to the internet and go to, say, Firefox, and it will uh, run up, I would hope. It'll take a little second. It's running off the USB drive. It's running on this Atom-based system. But it does work. Come on, work for me. There we are. It's worked. And uh, you've got to talk to computers, haven't you? Make them work. And we can go to explaining computers. Incomputers.com, I suppose. I could type my own website address eventually. And uh, yes, it'll work. We can get online with this system. And um, we can run up things like, say, GIMP, which is down here under uh, graphics. There we are. Let's run up GIMP. And again, it's going to work. I find this fantastic. SBCs are for experimentation at times, aren't they? And in fact, the fact you can run a big mainstream Linux distro on the uh, Atomic Pi is, is really cool. I think this is absolutely great. Let's do that in a single window mode. Thank you very much. So there we are. I just thought I'd show you this. It's not particularly helpful. Perhaps it's not the best distro to run. You'd be much better running a lightweight distro like the one we've just seen. But it's nice to see you can run Linux Mint 19.1 on the Atomic Pi. So, I just thought you might be interested in taking a look at the BIOS on the Atomic Pi. It's nice to see a BIOS on a single board computer. We have one, of course, because it's a, an x86 based machine. And if we move along here, I'll just show you a few of the options here. Under CPU configuration, we can see uh, information on our Atom processor. And if we go down to hardware monitor, we can see that the thing is idling along at a nicer 42 degrees C. I can report the heatsink barely gets hot with this machine even after intensive use, which is, is really good. We look under chipset, you can see where our, our memory information is there, our two gigabytes of RAM running at 1600 megahertz. And we can also here change the amount of memory allocated to the internal graphics, which is a default at 32 megabytes, but we can take that all the way up to uh, what is it, 5, 12 megabytes. That can be useful if you want to use this, for example, as a, a media player. If we go to uh, boot, you'll see there's various boot options, some interesting uh, options uh, in there. And uh, I think from that, we'll just uh, escape and uh, quit without saving. I just thought I'd give you a brief look at the BIOS. The Atomic Pi is the cheapest x86 based single board computer I've ever reviewed. And it begs the question, how can digital loggers purchase an Intel Atom CPU and two gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of onboard flash storage and uh, other components and put them all together as the Atomic Pi and sell it for $35 or even $50 and still make a profit? And the answer to that question, as far as I can see, is that they can't. And whilst the Atomic Pi is a great board, it's a fantastic value single board computer, it's not quite what it seems. As you may have noticed, the words Atomic Pi do not appear on the circuit board. And this is because, as far as I can tell, the board was never manufactured to be the Atomic Pi. Rather, the board is an Aeon MF001 that was manufactured for a Bosch spin-off company called Mayfield Robotics. Specifically, what is now sold as the Atomic Pi appears to have been the control board for a domestic robot called Curie that was announced at CES in 2017, but which never came to market. You can learn more about Curie and its cancellation on this web page that I'll link in the video description. Searching the web, I've managed to find the specs for the MF001 and which are identical to the Atomic Pi. 
I've also found the auction pages where the unused MF001 boards from Mayfield Robotics were sold off in late 2018. There appear to have been four lots, each containing between about five and 8,000 MF001s, and quite how many of these digital loggers purchased and apparently rebranded as the Atomic Pi, we can but guess. But what all of this does almost certainly mean is that the Atomic Pi is a remaindered industrial component, and therefore in limited supply. Now, all of this doesn't really matter. The Atomic Pi is a great value single board computer. And indeed, if you buy an Atomic Pi, you're probably buying a computer where you're paying less than the cost of the components that make up the board. This said, if you want to get an Atomic Pi, it really means you have to act quickly. You have to buy one sooner rather than later, because once all those MF001 boards have gone, they're gone. In my next Atomic Pi video, I'll be comparing the board to the original Latte Panda 232. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh,